Turn into rivers in the northeast after nearly a foot of rain fell on spots in over 24 hours. You could still see flooding as you head out the door this morning. Plus, more storms are on the way. Jim. Yeah, that was brutal. We're going to talk. Headquarters on meteorologist Stephanie Abrams alongside meteorologist Jordan Steele and Jim Cantori. Jim, let's get to that northeast flooding. It has been Holy devastating. Smoke. Roads washed out. Double digit totals. Just horrific. Right. So yesterday we had an event and then uh, where we go from here. All right. So all of this, by the way, on top of Debbie, Debbie's moisture, right? So we've right. just kind of been piling oh, it up here super uh, for also. us. Look at Ernesto. I still can't believe we made landfall on Bermuda. Like, what are the chances? What What are it's the chances? Happened. It's ha yeah, that 21 this mile long, two tiny mile little wide. Fish hook. This no. little guy right here. No. What are the chances? Anyhow, Ernesto still, by the way, pumping out the waves to the east coast. So do keep that in mind. And we do still have this trough in place that is going to give us that unsettled weather. Remember last week we were talking about this lasting into Monday. There are your showers now. We do have flash flood warning into uh, Long Island all the way out, out towards Montauk for us. And the chance for some thunderstorms today along the coastal areas. That does include Connecticut. There is a chance for flooding for us here. So here's a look at what you need in one hour in order to cause flash flooding. You don't need a lot. Even in the northern New Jersey here, half an inch to an inch in one hour to cause flash flooding. Into Connecticut, you need one to two inches in an hour to cause flash flooding. And notice through central portions of the northeast, just half an inch to an inch in order to cause flash flooding. So you don't need a lot. As we go through the day, you're going to get that daytime heating. That'll help us. And look at these storms. This is what I'm concerned about here in Connecticut. We don't need any more rain there, obviously. And along the 995 corridor, we could see some bigger boomers. Again, I'm hoping this keeps people off the beaches as we still do have that rip current threat for us thanks to those waves uh, coming in. There's a closer look at Connecticut and the heavy rain coming in. Southeastern Connecticut, New London, uh, Mystic. We are going to see some of those showers, and then this afternoon into the evening is when things are really going to pop for us around 6 o'clock. Everyone needs to be very aware around dinner time, and then as you're going to bed for some of this flooding rain to come on down here into Connecticut. Remember, northern New Jersey, we only need half an inch to an inch in order to cause flash flooding. We could easily get that here, especially as we head later in the day. Jordan. So it's always one that you have to like stop and say slowly, right. <laughs> you know, record cold high. How does that work? We usually give a low and essentially it just means that the temperature is not getting very hot. It's going to stay quite cool. Let's have a look at Florida and boy, nothing cool here, though. We did have a little bit of a break from that heat and humidity, especially in northern Florida, right? With some of that drier air getting in on the west side of Ernesto. Dew point temperatures, though, we're back at it here today. Highs into the 80s and 90s, up and down the peninsula and the Panhandle, but we are going to see a little bit of relief, at least for some of us here into northern Florida. This front, though, is going to continue to bring us scattered showers and thunderstorms over the state. It's kind of a unsettled week for us here into Florida. So there's a look at the showers, the storms. I mean, listen, at least it's not a hurricane. That's good, right? It seems like the tropics are taking a little bit of a break, a little hiatus here, and we'll take it while we have it because there's still the peak of the hurricane season to go. We are not finished yet. We still have a long way to go to get through it. But notice through the entire week, showers and thunderstorms. So if you're still on summer break, then you're headed to Florida. Watch for those one to two inches of rain for us here. It is a rainy season after all in Florida, so it's not too shocking. Tampa, what the rain and the clouds do is cool you off. Look at today, 92 hot and humid degrees for us. And as we work our way through Miami, it's scattered showers and thunderstorms. This is very typical of summertime, nothing that's out of the ordinary. But the atmosphere basically bubbles up through the day because it's hot and it boils and boils and boils and then it rains out and cools everything off. It's just kind of part of the whole process, Jim. It's how we get our rain yeah. in the west. Ahead in the T-Mobile Coast to Coast forecast and give you a peek at temperatures in your area as you plan your travel for the weekend. And as we look at today, it's the northeast where we're going to see the rain again. The heat is going to be on into the southern plains. It could feel like 110, 15 for some of us. Rain continues in Florida for a big bulk of the week. Otherwise, it's pretty quiet. Unlike me, I'm always very loud. I've always been very loud. I try to tone that down a little. A little rain here along the West Coast. That's where it will be cool, and we will stay below average here from the Great Lakes into the Northeast into our Friday. Really not a lot of action, with the exception of Florida and the West Coast and some of that monsoon moisture. 
We will see those temperatures start to rebound, though, as we head into our Sunday in the center of the country. Another car, at least, in there. Thanks for staying with us on America's Morning Headquarters. I'm meteorologist Stephanie Abrams alongside meteorologist Jordan Steele and Jim Cantori. A report of 10 inches of rain falling southeast of Southbury, Monroe, Connecticut, with more on the way, as I mentioned, for the Northeast. So, Jordan, let's get to that Northeast flooding because I think we can take this all the way back to Debbie saturating the grounds there. And it really wasn't super dry before Debbie in places like Connecticut. Well, and you know what we could do? A tree to cool off, you say? Well, head to Raleigh, North Carolina, because the city's founding trial kicks off tonight at 8, 7 Central right here on the Weather Channel. Though, Jim, I understand why people will stay on their boat if that's their home. They want to, yeah. you know, protect their home. But a lot of times people will take their boats and bring them up stream into right. little rivers and whatnot and tuck them in safe ports safe right? and try ports. and get up to safe yeah. port but yeah i mean you know if you're a boater and you're right on the uh, on an area that has a high change in tide you have to change the lines yeah okay you have to kind of adjust to, to where the tide is to keep it tight and secure